It's Friday, March 4th, and the time for your body is to be more music lead. Several new community resource centers are to be built across the island in the coming years. This says government seeks to implement a number of youth development and sporting programs. Officials in the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment revealed those plans after some members of parliament, including MP for St. James Central, Kerry Simmons, expressed frustration at not having community development and resource facilities in their constituencies. Minister of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment Charles Griffith gave the assurance that work would be done to ensure community centers were established in areas where there presently were none. While the ministry's permanent secretary, Yoland Howard, disclosed that some sites had been identified over the last few years for the building of new community resource centers. The Initial siting of centers would have been based on population density within communities. Those densities will change, and it means that we need to be able to assess the community population density and demographics to then assess the need for a community center. And over the last few years, we have been identifying some centers, but unfortunately, we have not had the resources to be able to build as many new centers. We did successfully attain approval and funds from the Ministry of Finance to build a new center at the Bathsheba location. We have gotten permission as well to build a center in Bridgetown in the area of Ponside Bay Street um, near the London Bourne community. Uh, we're looking at other sites as well. We're now looking as well as a site in, in St. Thomas because like St. James Central, St. Thomas does not have a dedicated community center. But I want to assure the honorable member that we, are, we have not forgotten him. Um, the question was posed before and we are looking at all areas. Um, the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Rural Development would of course um, have to be guiding us in terms of the location of state lands that can be used to accommodate community centers. The Alliance Owners of Public Transport is reporting a decline in the number of complaints being lodged against public service vehicle drivers and conductors over their conduct on the country's roads. That's according to data released by AOPT Chairman Roy Raphael. Emmanuel Joseph has other details. Raphael has attributed the work of his organization to the declining rate of complaints against PSV operators. We are generally satisfied that the work of the PSV Association or Alliance have, have done well. We are seeing the decline in number of complaints, although that there are sort of bad apples there. Our complaints against PSV operators continue to decline, and we welcome that. But we are just watching the situation because now that the public is, the country is reopened, the possibility of seeing an increase is very much there as well. He revealed that between January 1st and March 1st this year, the Association's Complaints Department received six complaints for drinking and driving, 20 for the playing of loud music, 8 for being off route, 40 for dragging, 10 for refusing to wear a mask, and 25 for overloading. The officials said that in the last two months of 2021, there were 15 public complaints for drinking and driving, 25 for loud music, 10 for being off route, 58 complaints for dragging, 16 for refusing to wear a mask, and 30 for overloading. However, he fears the rate of complaints could rise again as a result of the opening up of the country following physical distancing and mass gathering restrictions that had been imposed to try to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus. Raphael also disclosed that his organization plans to introduce a forum very shortly where PSV leaders would be able to speak directly to the public and get feedback on various types of issues that concern them. Things like routine, uh, things like uh, off-road, things like um, behavior pattern because it, as, as you know it goes both ways. We, we still continue to get a lot of complaints against um, commuters who refuse to pay the operators, who don't want to wear their masks, threaten the operators, and so on. That was Chairman of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport, Roy Raphael. And I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today.
The national vaccination program could reach its target of vaccinating 75 to 80 percent of the country's eligible population before the end of the year. That's the view of the program's core coordinator, Major David Clark, who said the numbers were slowly but surely inching towards that goal set by Prime Minister Mia Mosley late last year. According to Wednesday's statistics, 160,288 persons have received at least the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, while 149,692 people are fully vaccinated. That represents 55.2% of the entire population and 70.2% of the eligible population. Major Clark tells Bobby this today, officials are working on an initiative which he believes will bolster those figures by at least 10%. I think um, we are just about to roll a strategy with the Ministry of Education. I think once we do that, because we are 50% of the eligible of the young people between, we're 55% between uh, 12 to 18. And I think once we roll up that strategy, we'll probably get another 10%. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses, and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To developments in the region, a police officer in Guyana has been hauled before the law courts on a death by dangerous driving charge, which was allegedly committed while on duty. More from News Source Guyana. Police Corporal Lawrence Carmichael appeared in court this morning on the heavy police guard and was charged for causing the death of mechanic Christopher Bangwandat and high school student Sharita Prasad. Kamichael is accused of driving a Ghana police force vehicle in a dangerous manner during a high-speed chase of the car being driven by the mechanic, causing an accident that claimed the lives of the mechanic and his teenage passenger. In court today, the accused was not allowed to enter a plea to the indictable charge. After the details of the charge were read to him, the magistrate granted the accused bail in the sum of $1.5 million. He was represented by attorneys Dexter Todd, Dexter Smart, and Devon Cox. Outside of the magistrate's court, relatives of the two dead youths gathered in protest and demanded justice. They said their children would have been alive today had they not been chased by the police in a dangerous manner. And finally, on the international front, 175 nations have endorsed a historic resolution to end plastic pollution and forge an international legally binding agreement by 2024. With the document, which was agreed to at the just-concluded United Nations Environment Assembly held in Kenya, heads of state, ministers of environment and other representatives are looking to address the full life cycle of plastic, including its production, design and disposal. Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, Amina Mohamed, has welcomed the resolution. Progress on a legally binding global agreement on the plastic pollution is a truly welcome first step to implementation, and it will make a difference, one that shows again the true value of multilateralism. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.